Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Monday, June 11th, and today it is the second seeded Hopkinton Hillers taking on Duxbury in the South Division II bracket. Duxbury was able to take down Dighton Rehoboth in the first round to advance to the quarterfinals round against the Hopkinton Hillers, and they will certainly have their match here today. As I pull up the brackets here, Duxbury is indeed the seventh seed with a 13 and eight record. Hopkinton, the second seed with a 14 and three record. Let's take a look at the Duxbury lineup on this beautiful 69 degree Monday. The sun is out for the most part, some clouds in the sky, but some perfect weather for baseball. Leading things off for Duxbury, it's Luke Eggers, the second baseman, Charlie Kuhn, the pitcher, Pat McLampy, the first baseman batting third, Frankie Tower, the right fielder, hitting cleanup, Aiden Lusco, the DH hitting fifth, Jack Murphy, the catcher hitting sixth, Tanner Smith, the shortstop hitting seventh, John Roberts, the center fielder hitting eighth, Sam Regan, the left fielder hitting ninth, and Jack Peters, the odd man out of the lineup, playing center field. Larry, how about that Hiller's defense? Okay, let's take you around the infield. There's Ryan Kester at third base, Timmy Burdick at short, Jack Whaley at second base, Zach Sisiski at first, Connor Hebert in left field, Ben McKenzie in center field, and Tommy Ambrosoni, I pronounced it right. And right, Brendan Kelly on the mound, Steven Simos be the catcher. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Hopkinton Hillers playoff baseball. Alex Walton, our camera person this evening as the first pitch is ball one to Luke Eggers, the second baseman. That's There's a nice pitch by Brendan Kelly. Beauty. Last game out, yeah, he was featuring a lot of breaking pitches. The 1-1. One, one. Check swing, strike two. He's got a little extra today, Tom. A little extra, extra something. Well, I mean, the Hillers have had, what, a week off now, so they should be well rested. That one just outside, two and two. Dealing pretty quickly is Brendan Kelly. Get you the stats on Kelly throughout the season. He's been pretty impressive from the mound. That one is high and outside, full count. It's 2 1 on the year with a 2.03 ERA. Thank you, Larry. Brendan. Nine appearances. As Luke Eggers steps back in and awaits the decisive pitch. This is hit high in the air over to left field. Ranging in and making the catch is Connor Hebert, one away. That'll bring up Charlie Kuhn, the pitcher. Kuhn pitched a masterpiece, masterpiece against Dighton Rehoboth in their earlier game. Went, I think, five innings. It was nothing, nothing in the five until they walked it off with a hit batsman. Do you mean seven? Yeah. Malampi came in, I think, uh, for the final two, but ah. this kid, we'll see a lot of him today. The 1 0. In there for a strike. I believe you got the name of our umpires today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I do, as a matter of fact. Art Krikorian behind the plate and Jake Bracada with the bases. That one down low, two and one. Well, you got Steve Simos behind the plate. We haven't seen much of that this season. He's been battling injuries, but has been doing a good amount of DHing. But so far, so good for Simos behind the plate. He is key to keep that run game shut down. 2-1, up the middle on the ground, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, six to three. Play was a little bit closer than it should have been. Certainly but was. an out is an out, is an out. Some good zip on that throw from Burdick, however. Pat McLampy, the first baseman, will step in. He's their closer, I think. The only stats I could find were in the Patriot Ledger. It was just an article. Duxbury won three out of their last four to end out the season. On the ground, picked up at short, throw to first, not in time. Lampy beats it out. 
two out single. That'll bring up Frankie Tower. The reason he beat that out, Tom, is he's a lefty hitter, so he had that one extra step out of the box. Looks had he been a righty, he would have been out of there. Looks like he might have got a piece of the lip of the grass, too, which is always a tough play to make. Timmy's got to be a little aggressive on those ground balls. Frankie Tower, a senior, as Kelly works from the stretch. There's a strike, 0 and 1. He definitely has some extra zip on the ball. Last year in the quarterfinals, Chris Burdick pitched a beauty against Falmouth. Hopefully, Brendan Kelly can do the same. That one just outside. Simos moves towards first to keep an eye on the runner. Good turnout here today so far for Hiller's playoff baseball as there's a strike. That was a nice breaking pitch right there, Tom. Yeah, that was a beauty. Got an early arriving crowd today. Normally get the stragglers come in the second and third inning. The one, two. Right, yeah. Got him. Strike three, out number three to the bottom of the first we go. The Hillers coming up next on HCAM. Moving on to the bottom of the first inning, let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers batting order. Ben McKenzie playing center field batting first. Tommy Ambersoni playing right field batting second. Steve Simos, the catcher, batting third. Zach Sasitsky, the first baseman batting cleanup. Anthony Farina, the DH hitting fifth. Jack Whaley, the second baseman hitting sixth. Ryan Kessler, the third baseman hitting seventh. Brendan Kelly, the catcher hitting eighth. Connor Hebert is the left fielder hitting ninth. The odd man out of the batting order is shortstop Tim Burdick. Larry, how about that Duxbury defense? Yeah, the Green Dragons are featuring Jack Peters at third, Tanner Smith at short, Luke Eggers at second, Pat Malampi at first, Sam Regan, left field, John Roberts in center, Frankie Tower in right field, Jack Murphy behind the plate, catching Charlie Kuhn. Charlie Kuhn, a sophomore pitcher for Duxbury, getting the start today, and you mentioned that he had a great game against Dighton Rehoboth in the first round. We'll take you through the bracket as well throughout the course of the broadcast. Well, but ben McKenzie, I think, is looking at that Jeep out in left center field. That's where his home runs go. I hope they get their hard hats out there. Ben McKenzie at a 364 on the season. Line up and the pitch. In there for strike one. The 0-1, low. Left fielder's playing a little too shallow for my liking. My liking is Ben hits it over his head, so he can stay there. Line up in the pitch, breaking pitch inside, two and one. Uh, maybe a little knuckleball action there. Mm, have to keep an eye on that. Winner of this game advances to take on the winner of Nossett and Oliver Ames. That game's scheduled for a 4.30 start over at Frank. Frottingham Park in Easton. Two and two's the count. We don't have to go to Rockland? I don't think so. Okay, excellent. Up the left side on the ground, picked up at third base. Throw to first is in time. Good throw cross from Jack Peters. That'll bring up Tommy Ambersoni, the right fielder. He's always a threat to bunt, Tommy. Good, good, good. He's got good wheels. Line up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Coon's got a little extra zip on his ball. A little hump to the last mile there. Could have a good pitcher's duel here today as that breaking pitch is outside. One and one. On the other side of the South Division II bracket, you got the winner of North Attleboro and Somerset Berkeley taking on the winner of Plymouth South and Dartmouth. Right up in the pitch, inside. Two and one. 
There was some ooze in the crowd. They thought it was in too tight, but Tommy Amasino didn't move a bit. Two and two. Tommy Amersoni, a 250 batting average on the season. Nine runs scored, eight driven in. Breaking pitch outside, that'll fill up the count. Coons is working quickly. He just shook off a sign from his catcher earlier. Went with the curveball. A pitch inside, and Ambersoni draws the walk. Another inside pitch, he didn't even budge. That'll bring up Steve Simos, someone who definitely will not budge, the catcher today. With his 13 uh, hit by pitches this year? No, I don't think he's budging. He might uh, scratch up the back of that batter's box as he likes to do. He's right on top of the plate. A Little bit of a lead for Ambersoni, pitcher throws over, he slides back safe. Well, Mark Sanborn coaching over at first base, he's got an experienced guy to yell to Tommy when he's gonna pick over. Tommy Ambersoni tied for second on the team with 10 walks. This is hit high in the air over to shallow left field and ranging in to make the catch is Sam Regan, two away. That'll bring up Zach Sasitsky hitting cleanup today. He's the first baseman. And the captain. We're in 22. Sasitsky hitting a 340 on this season. He's played in all 20 games. He'll be a shrub come the fall, Georgetown. Swinging strike. That's what a Hoya is, a shrub. Yeah. To have it as a mascot, I don't know. Another Larry Sacklad fun fact. Yes. Throw over, Ambersoni slides back safe. Sasitsky has scored 12, driven in 13 this season. 450 on base percentage. High and inside, Ambersoni's taking off. The throw up is going to be off the mark. The shortstop couldn't get there in time. Stolen base for Ambersoni. That was a delayed steal. Yeah, he saw a little hesitation from the catcher and he just bolted the rest of the way. He was already halfway up the base path. The infielders were a little late to get into the bag, so they weren't expecting it. Playing really, really deep in right field for Zach. Ambersoni with a bit of a lead off of the second base bag. The shortstop playing in behind him. That pitch outside. He hasn't been able to throw this breaking pitch for a strike yet. Two and one. Fouls that one off. Two and two. All Zach has to do is dump one in right field, and that'll score Tommy Ambrosino. Tommy Ambrosino. Sony. Sony. Oh, sorry, family. That name has got you all season long. It really has. It's like the De Benedictus family from Ashland. Ambrosino will score easily. Ambrosoni. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting some Chinese food after the end of the game. It's good for brains, I hear. <laughs> My goodness. Ambersoni leading off a second, the 2-2. Two -two. This is hit in the air, foul. Great crowd on hand here today, continuing to fill in. Hiller's playoff fever, certainly at its peak here today. Anthony Farina, the DH, is on deck. We got a lefty-lefty matchup with Zach and Tally Coons. Two outs, one on for the Hillers. Scoreless game between Hopkinton and Duxbury here in the bottom of the first. Wind up and the pitch, swinging strike, he got him. That will be the third out of the bottom of the first. To the top of the second we go. We are scoreless between Hopkinton and Duxbury on H-Camp. 
Top of the second inning, a great crowd on hand here today for this playoff game in the South Division II bracket between the Duxbury Green Dragons and the Hopkinton Hillers. As stepping in to the batter's box is Aiden Lesko, the DH. Brennan Kelly set to deal. There's a strike. He's just pounding that baseball. Aiden Lesko, a senior. There's strike two. He's got confidence in that breaking ball today. He sent that last hitter back to enjoy a little bit of the dugout last inning. In the end. Gets the lefty swinging one away. I hear the pine is nice and soft in that dugout. They'll bring up Jack Murphy, the catcher. Second strikeout of the day for Brendan Kelly. Up the left side, past the reach of Kester, and that'll trickle into left field for a one-out single. Very tough being a dad when your son is out on the mound. You get all sorts of nerves, and you don't want to be cheering your son on because you know he's going to pick out your voice. Not easy being a man on the island. As Tanner Smith steps in. Well, with this crowd, it might be tough to pick out anyone's voice. Good amount of people here today. You'll always pick out your dad's <laughs> voice. <laughs> that is true. I know when I played Little League, I always used to hear my dad's voice. And you didn't like it. <laughs> Especially if you were pitching. Most of the time he would be saying, pitch better. <laughs> That's fouled away, and the runner's going to take off. But I believe he's going to have to return, and he will. He'll have to make the slow 90-foot walk. 0-2 oh on the shortstop. <laughs> Brendan can pretty much throw anything he wants here. 0-2. Oh Throws a breaking ball, it's fouled away. <laughs> Is you, the, the moms did a great job with the kids' uniforms, getting them nice and bright and white. And the dads, too. I'm sure they helped. From the stretch, the 0-2. Strike three. Got him looking. Two away. Beauty of a pitch there. That'll bring up John Roberts, the center fielder. That was a nice pitch to admire, Tom, I'll tell you. His velocity is something else today. Carlo Barsotti last uh, week's umpire said he had him three games, and that was the best he's thrown. I would say he's topping that today. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. Line up and the pitch, low. Brennan Kelly has 34 strikeouts on the season coming into this game. One, I think he's got 16 or 18 walks, so that's good strikeout to walk ratio. Nobody's gonna hit that pitch. Two and oh. Yeah, 18 walks. That's a team leading 34 strikeouts as well. He's a pure power pitcher. That went a little high, 3-0. He's oh. going to find his release point. Lost it for a little bit. From the stretch. There's a strike. Took a little off of that one. Make sure he just got, them, got one over the plate. Runner with a bit of a lead off of first, the 3-1. High and outside, John Roberts draws the walk. That'll bring up Sam Regan, the left fielder. Wearing number 42, it's a little unusual. And maybe he's a Move On fan. Well, 
That number's been retired all over the major leagues. Nobody's allowed to wear that number. The lineup and the pitch, low. Both runners with a pretty significant lead. Murphy thought about taking off for third, but thought twice about it. Stevie was having a little trouble. It was right between his feet. Sam Regan, a junior for Duxbury. Checking at second, runner slides back safe. Not sure whether Stevie Simos or Coach Simos is calling that pickoff play over at second base. The 1-0. Fires in a strike. That's a confidence pitch for Brendan right there. The 1-1. One, one. And this is up the middle. Glove by the drop by the second baseman. Throw to first. And everybody's gonna be safe. I don't know, that was close at first base. Got to give Jack an error as much as you don't want to. Yep. So that's going to be bases loaded with two outs. I don't know how he caught up with that ball. That ball was close to being neck high. I was surprised he swung at it. Luke Eggers steps in the second baseman. He flew out last inning. Bases loaded for Duxbury, two outs. This is Brendan's first jam he's got into. One outside, one and oh. Interesting call there starting Eggers off with a breaking pitch. It's Jack Mo Murphy over at third, John Roberts at second, Sam Regan at first. Up high. Well, Kelly in a bit of a jam. I think you'll see Coach Anderson Pitching coach come out if he walks him. He's been consistently high. There's one right in there for strike one. The two one. Just up high. It's just his release point, that's all. It's not his velocity or anything like that. Gotta get his chest over his, his waist. He'll be good. 3-1. In there, four strike two. He has three strikeouts in this game, two of which came in this top of the second. I don't know whether Eggers is begging for a walk. That's strike three. Strike three, gets him looking and he gets out of the jam. We'll head to the bottom of the second. We are scoreless on HCAN. Bottom of the second inning coming up for the Hillers, five, six, and seven. Anthony Farina, Jack Whaley, and Ryan Kester to face Charlie Kuhn out there for his second inning of work. A bit of a jam in the top of the second for Brendan Kelly. It was bases loaded, two outs, but he got out of it by striking out Luke Eggers after being down 3-1 in the count. Kelly was able to battle his way back and get through the inning. Hillers had a batting practice yesterday against some very good pitching and Anthony had a couple of bombs. He'll take ball one here. He'll be a fire in the fall. Anthony Farina had a 316 on the season. He's played in all 20 games. There's a strike. Couldn't quite check it. Seven runs scored, 16 driven in, three doubles for the senior. Takes that one outside. Still waiting for a curveball for a strike from Coons. Maybe that's his sucker pitch. Line up and the pitch, swing strike, two and two. Deals, breaking pitch in there for strike three. Nice 
drop on that pitch, one away. Jack Whaley will step in, the second baseman. I don't think Coach Simos has uh, left anything unnoticed each time Murphy has thrown down a second base during warm-ups. He's bounced the ball, so that may put the run game into effect. Slashed foul. Whaley had a 317 mark on the season. 20 runs scored, 12 driven in. A pair of doubles to his credit. Yo one, sliced foul. Hiller is hitting a 306 as a team. The 0 2. That one low. Jack is heading down to Southwest Florida to either chase golf balls around the uh, courses down there in high school or perhaps he'll change his mind and stay on the baseball field. Been a fun kid to watch. Certainly has. He's gotten better and better as the season has gone on as well. You are 100% correct. I want to high and outside, two and two. Ryan Kester on deck. Wind starting to pick up a little bit here. That field two. Swinging strike, two away. It's the third strikeout of the game for Charlie Kuhn. Matt Lindquist has been playing third base for the last six or seven games. Coach Simons decides to make a change. Got Matt Lindquist on the bench for some pinch hitting duties. That one up high. Ryan Kessler at a 306 batting average on the season. He's played in 16 games. Swing strike. I'm impressed with Kuhn's fastball. Yeah, it's been a good pitching matchup here so far. The 1-1. One, one. Fires in for strike two. One pitch away from striking out the side. No jinxing, no jinxing, come on. We're going for the reverse jinx on this one. All right. Well, Coons is pitching out of the stretch. Gets a piece of it over to center, and that'll drop in for a base hit. Kester is going to round first, but stay put, a two-out single. The hang and break and pitch by Coons. That's going to bring up Brendan Kelly, the catcher. Excuse me, the pitcher. He's got some business to take care of with his opposite number, Charlie Coons. And Kelly, a 270 batting average on the season. He's played in 18 games. Checking at first. Kester, oh, they got him. He's picked off. No. And that is going to be the third out. That was a very close play. The umpire seemed to be uh, looking right at it. So nothing you could do there. We'll head to the top of the third. We're scoreless between Hopkinton and Duxbury on HCAM. Top of the third inning, two, three, and four due up for Duxbury. Charlie Kuhn, the pitcher. Pat McClamley, the first baseman, and Frankie Tower, the right fielder. To face Brandon Kelly, who did a nice job getting out of a jam last inning. Through that break and pitch for strike three. It's an elimination game, so loser will be very unhappy. The winner will be real happy. I want a pie. The winner of this will take on the winner of Nossett and Oliver Ames. Oliver Ames is sixth seed. Nossett the 14th. As this is hit in the air, foul out of play. Hillers have beaten Nossett twice already this year. Nossett pulled off a huge upset. They were 6 and 12 to end the regular season, but got into the postseason due to strength of schedule. And they beat Whitman Hansen, who's a 15 and 5 team in the first round. That pitch is outside. Whitman Hansen was a third seed upset by the 14th seed. 
which gave Oliver Ames the home game as they defeated Bishop Fian in nine innings, three to two, as this is hit high in the air, over to left center, this could be trouble, and it's caught right at the fence. Ben McKenzie ranging way over to reel that one in, one away. That's why he's first team All-Star, the TVL. Congratulations to Stevie Simos, who's the MVP in the TVL. So two Hillers, two consecutive years have taken home the MVP award. That'll bring up Pat Malampi, the first baseman. McKenzie just knows how to play that little hill out there in the center field area. Ran right up the hill and was able to make that catch. There's a strike. That was a shot. Yeah, I'd say if there was a warning track, that would have been on it. Little Minute Maid Park there with that hill. And this is up the middle, glove by Kelly. He'll take it over to first base, little flip, no problem. One to three for the second out. And he'll bring up Frankie Tower, the right fielder who struck out in his only at bat this game. And I might add, he struck out looking. That was the first out of four strikeouts for Brandon Kelly. Nasty breaking pitch, strike one. I'm feeling kind of claustrophobic. Are you with all these fans all over the place? <laughs> Behind us, around us? Great atmosphere here today. As this is hit high in the air, over to right center, and it's reeled in by Ben McKenzie. Once again, man, can he cover a lot of ground. One, two, three, they go in the top of the third. To the bottom of the third we go. We are scoreless on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, eight, nine, and one do up for the Hillers. Brendan Kelly, Connor Hebert, and Ben McKenzie to face Charlie Kuhn. Good pitchers battle here so far between Hopkinton and Duxbury as we are currently scoreless. Brendan Kelly will step back in for his second time during his at bat in the second inning. Brian Kester was picked off of first base so he gets another chance at it. Check swing, but that's strike one. No argument there from Brendan. Yeah, that was right down the pipe. He's got a home run in the season. A long one, Millis. Breaking pitch, got him to swing there, 0 and 2. He had that, oh, you got me look on that one. Upstairs. The one, two. High and inside. <laughs> two and two. I'm impressed with Kuhn so far. We'll see how, how he does with a little adversity, though. Swinging strike. Out number one. That'll bring up Connor Hebert for his first time today, the left fielder. Connor Hebert, a 278 batting average in 19 games. Seven driven in, 12 scored. Heading down to University of Maryland come the fall. Just that one foul, 0 and 1. He never gets cheated with a swing. All or nothing. That one in the dirt, one and one. Should have stuck his foot out there to get on the base. I'm not up there hitting, so just a little commentary on my part. <laughs> Fouled away, one and two. <laughs> Coons has got him set up for a curveball. Wind up and the pitch. That one in the dirt once again, two and two. What did I tell you? He's gonna throw a curveball. <laughs> ben McKenzie do up next. <laughs> two 
2-2 pitch upstairs. Connor gets on, you can look for him to steal on Murphy. Get him in a scoring position quickly with Ben McKenzie on deck. That one outside, Connor Hebert draws the walk. A 1-0 walk and that'll bring up the top of the order for the Hillers, Ben McKenzie will step in. I'm sure Coach Sanborn is talking to Connor Hebert, making sure he does not get picked off. He's got a greedy lead over there. Takes an extra shuffle. Check in, runner slides back safe. Good pickoff move from Charlie Kuhn. Connor's got a two and a half shuffle lead. Takes a little quarter step. Going in there for a strike. That would, have good, that would have been a good pitch to steal on. Slow breaking pitch. But I get a feeling Connor's gonna go. The 0-1, runner slides back safe. Connor's third on the team with steals with seven. Behind Ben McKenzie and Stevie Simos. Nine bags each. And that one's in the dirt, and Connor Hebert will easily have second base. He would have had it regardless. One and one now on McKenzie. One out, runner on second. Come on, Ben. Put one in the Jeep. It's a piece of this one up the left side, foul. It's a little head on that pitch. He's very hard to retire, Tom. Throwing him on the inside, he can pull his hands in and still drive the ball. Kuhn set to throw the one-two pitch. Big lead over at second for Hebert. Upstairs. It's highly unlikely Coons is going to overpower Ben McKenzie. It's going to be the other way around. Coon takes a look over at Hebert, who's having a Big lead over there at second base. That one's going to get by. Hebert will advance to third on the wild pitch. Spike that pitch. No chance for Murphy behind the plate. Now a full count on Ben McKenzie. Infield playing in now. They're going to cut the ball off and throw to the plate if it comes right to them. Now the second baseman and the shortstop are backing up. Tips that one foul into the catcher's glove. Out number two. Tommy Ambersoni will step in. It wouldn't be, uh, well, let me back up. I wouldn't pe put it past Coach Simos to suicide squeeze. He's done it once or twice this year already. Gets a piece of that one. That goes flying foul. It was in on his hands. Tommy Ambrosoni. Oh, and one on the lefty. Upstairs. Runner on third, two outs. Tommy's got a slightly open stance at the plate. Might be to get that extra quarter of a second extra look. It's a piece of this one up the left side and foul. Were you guessing that was foul or did you know it was foul? No, I knew. I saw the <laughs> direction it was going. One and two. It's the only spot where we have a blind spot in this field. It hasn't been too much of a problem this season.
Yeah, Tommy's we'll going to be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step in. Tommy's going to be playing for post 59 in Milford this year. Gets a piece of that one, that's a foul. Good battle here between Tommy Eversoni and Charlie Coon. One-two pitch on Ambersoni. And another foul ball. About to hang in there, Tommy. Good battle. Jack Breslin staying busy tracking down the foul balls. That's his job today, Tom. That's into the backstop. Battle continues on. Coons might be saying, how do I get this kid out? Ambersoni walked and has only had bat in this game and stole a base. Up high. Two and two. Hiller's bench typically very quiet. They don't ride the pitcher much. The 2-2. Two -two. That's into the backstop. This is about an eight pitch at bat so far. He ought to just walk him. Connor Hebert's only 90 feet away. He'll get to that plate with any bobble by the catcher. 2-2. Two -two. Up the middle, past the glove of the pitcher, into center field, and a run will score. An RBI single for Tommy Ambersoni. That, Tommy, wakes up, that wakes up the Heller dugout. Certainly does. Tommy wins the battle. Connor Hebert comes around to score. Steve Simos to the plate. Look for Tommy to go again. Swipe a base and get in a scoring position. Put some pressure on Coons. I've been calling them Coons, it's a Coon, but. Checking at first, back safely is Amber Sony. What an at bat that was by Tommy. Nice piece of hitting. But Murphy can't throw from behind the plate. Simos hits that one out of play, 0 and 1. Kuhn used a slide step on that pitch so he can get to the ball, get the ball to the plate quicker. Because you lose a little velocity when you slide step. Zach Sasitsky do up next. Runner leading off of first, the 0-1, up high. He's been working hard this inning, Kuhn. It's been a long one-run inning for the Hillers. Now we're in the goes. dirt, and now Amber Sony's going to take off. Wild pitch, two and one. Nice job of blocking the ball by Murphy, but nothing you can do about a spike curveball. Yep. Second wild pitch this inning from Charlie Kuhn. Shortstop trying to sneak in behind Tommy. Side and now taking off for third is Ambersoni to throw up, not in time. Uh, I'm going to give that one a pass ball, I think, Larry. I think you should. But Murphy has already shown in, in between innings he doesn't have really a great arm. Yeah, some coaching there by Steve Simos Jr. to send the runner. As this is fouled away, full count. Last time up, he hit a sky-high pop-up. Didn't seem like it was ever going to come down. The left fielder. Well, 
wants to show off his MVP Tri-Valley Award. Nice bomb right here. Full count pitch. And this is up the right side, gloved by the first baseman. He'll run over, step on the bag. Three unassisted for the final out of the inning, but the Hillers do play to run. It's one to nothing Hopkinton as we head to the top of the fourth on H can. Top of the fourth inning, the windup and the pitch up high. It's Aiden Lusko, the DH in the batter's box. A one nothing lead for the Hillers. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Hopkinton Hillers playoff baseball. Alex Walton on camera. A 2 0 count on Lusko. Some sad news in the world of sports for those that were around during the days of the big bad Bruins. Johnny Pye McKenzie passed away today. As this is hit in the air, foul. Heads up, everybody, 2 and 1. That was before your time, Tommy. It was. <laughs> <laughs> His teammates got him a one to nothing lead. He doesn't want to give it back. Fires in strike two. Ooh, that was paint right on the inside corner. The two two. This is lined into left center. That's going to be trouble. That'll get down for a single. An absolute rope from Aiden Lusko, and that'll bring up Jack Murphy. One on, no outs. As the catcher will step in. He singled his last time up in the second inning. One for one on the day. Coach Simos barking out the defensive assignments where he wants those middle infielders to be. Nasty breaking pitch, strike one. Bit of a lead off of first for Lusco. A little bit, tiny bit. Ball one. Probably doesn't want to get victimized by Stevie Simos's arm. Kelly working from the stretch. The 1-1. One, one. That's fouled off. 1-2. and two. Nice play by Steve Simos. Coach. Give him a glove, send him out there. All right. One, two, and this is up the middle. Grab by the shortstop, flip to second for one. The throw to first is in time. Six, four, three, double play. Nice stretch by Zach Sosinski. A little bit of a low throw from Jack Whaley, but he did have to turn it quickly. Nice play all the way around. Tanner Smith will step in. Strike one. Ooh. Need a sand wedge to get to that pitch. Great baseball name, though, Tanner Smith. That is fouled off, 0 and 2. Brendan Kelly's all in Tanner Smith's head right now. Now he can pick anything off the menu to throw him. Ball one. One and two. That hit him. Two outs, one on. John Roberts, the center fielder, will come up to bat. Brendan didn't want to do that, certainly. I think he was trying to paint the inside corner. Got it, got it a little too inside there. Art Kikorian 
brushing off home plate. We'll try and get some full on one on these pitchers in between innings. Kelly, Smith, I'm sorry. Kelly, Smith once again from the stretch, runner leading off of first. Gets a piece of this one over to left field, but positioned perfectly is Connor Hebert, and that will be the third out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. The Hillers leading Duxbury 1-0 on each camp. Bottom of the fourth inning, Zach Sasitsky to step in to the left-handed batter's box. Take on Charlie Kuhn. A one nothing lead for Hopkinton. Nice pitcher's duel we have going on here. So far, I think Kuhn got Zach the last time he was up. Doesn't this time. Sasitsky drives this one into right center. That'll get down for a hit, a leadoff single. Just got a good piece of that one, and that'll bring up Anthony Farina. Anthony ought to wear flip flops to the plate because when he swings, he swings right out of his shoes. Charlie Kuhn threw a lot of pitches last inning. A little bit of a lead off of first for Sasitsky as this is popped in the air and caught by the first baseman, one away. And we'll bring up Jack Whaley. Oh, it was a jam shot there, right in on his hands. One on, one out. <laughs> Lined up and the pitch. One and oh. Nice pick by Murphy. These kids look six inches taller from our vantage point. We're on a slope here going down. Jack Whaley looks huge. I went up high. And Zach was all confused over there at first base. He couldn't read his move and he headed back towards first. Two oh pitch. Crushes this one into left field. That'll get down for a base hit. Sosinski held up at second. A one out single for Jack Whaley. Two on, one out. Brian Kester to the plate. He had a nice hit his last time up. Kuhn working from the stretch. Both runners with a pretty significant lead as he steps off the mound. For a sophomore, he's doing a really good job with the run game. He deals. And this is hit high in the air over to center field, battling the sun and making the catch is John Roberts, two away. Both runners stay put. Brendan Kelly coming up. He's got some payback for Mr. Kuhn. Kelly struck out and is only at bat this game. Both runners leading once again. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. I think Brendan was sitting all fastball on that pitch. That fastball will look extra quick if he throws it now. The 0 1. High and inside. Zach Sosinski over at second, Jack Whaley at first. Two outs in the inning. Kuhn stepped off the back of the rubber. Zach scampered a little bit back to second base. Middle infielder's trying to cheat over. Swinging strike, blazes it by him, one and two. All he needs is about 150 feet of hit here 
Doesn't have to be a 300 footer. Scores Zach Sisitsky. He deals. Strike three. There's strike three. Got him looking. So Charlie Kuhn gets out of a bit of a jam, and we will head to the top of the fifth. Hopkinton leading Duxbury 1 0 on H Cam. Top of the fifth inning, 9-1 and 2 due up for Duxbury. Sam Regan, Luke Eggers, and Charlie Kuhn. To face Brandon Kelly, who has pitched quite a game so far. A 1-0 lead for the Hillers. Winner of this game advances on to the South Division II semifinals. There's a strike. This is Hopkinton's first playoff game. Duxbury defeated Dighton Rehoboth in the first round, one to nothing. Hopkinton had the bye in the first round. Winner of this game will take on Nossett and Oliver Ames as their strike two. It's a 59 foot swing and miss. Coach Simos giving Stevie Simos the call. Yep. Got him. Three pitches, one out. Nice call, Coach Simos. Luke Eggers will step in. He's 0 for 2 today. I think his father owns a restaurant down in Duxbury. There's a strike. Ham and Eggers, they call it. Where'd you get that information from? <laughs> I think it was a Three Stooges episode, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh and two on the second baseman. Uh, I just couldn't keep that, keep that to myself for the whole game. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, Tom. The one, two pitch, fouled away. Slot him off. Nice breaking pitch. Brennan's really mixing them up today. You have to have the fire department come down and see uh, the occupancy is here. Really nice crowd. One, two pitch. Tipped foul. Empire. Checking on Luke Eggers, making sure he's all right. Here's the one, two. Upstairs. Brendan went, Brenda went all out on that pitch. The two, two. And that is actually for the moment, fair. Uh, I think they're going to call it foul. He got blocked out on that one, but wish the umpire wouldn't do that. Yeah, I think the umpire just wanted to get a good glimpse of it, make sure he it rolled it on the right side of the line. He wants some camera time. Come on, let's be honest. Right. <laughs> two and two. Up the left side, this is a fair ball. Picked up by the third baseman, good throw by Kester, and he got him. Two away. Daddy long leg to first base. A great stretch. I'll bring up Charlie Kuhn. I think that's the advantage of having uh, someone as tall as Zach Sasitsky over at first base. It's all that yoga or hot yoga or whatever he does. Very pliable. Coach Keen basketball drills. There's a strike. Kuhn acknowledges that it was in fact a strike. That's tipped foul, 0 and 2. It's a little too close for comfort, Tom. I'd like to see them put up some crooked number or something next inning. Strike. Oh. Just outside, I says apologize. the home plate umpire. Yeah, that was close. The one, two. That one's in the dirt. 
nice block. You tell a catcher that really knows what he's doing that will block a ball with nobody on base just for practice. Five strikeouts so far by Kelly, and there's number six. That is out number three in the top of the fifth. We'll head to the bottom of the inning. The Hiller is leading Duxbury 1-0 on H-Cam. Bottom of the fifth inning, a 1-0 lead for the Hopkinton Hillers in this playoff game against Duxbury. As we've been talking about all game long, a great crowd on hand here today. As you just got a glimpse of behind home plate. They were everywhere, they were like ants. Yeah, we've got a bunch in the outfield, a bunch along the third base side, further up from us. As Connor Hebert will step in, the left fielder, 9-1 and 2 do up. Hebert, McKenzie, and Amber Sony. Take strike one. The only run of the ball game was scored in the bottom of the third. Connor Hebert, after advancing from a stolen base and wild pitch, came around to score on a RBI single from Tommy Ambersoni. Pitch up high. The 1 1. Breaking ball that didn't break quite the way Kuhn wanted it. 2 and 1. His coach is flashing in the signs. Swinging strike. Oh, oh. feel the breeze. It was a 400 foot swing. The 2 2. That's fouled away into the Duxbury dugout. People ducking for cover in there. Nice dugouts, I must say, in their uh, inaugural year. Certainly is. They did a great job with the Tommy McIntyre project. The two and two. And that's just over the dugout. There are seats in that dugout, you know, but players want to hang over that fence. Well, with Connor Hebert at bat, might be a good idea. That one's upstairs, full count. Good at bat here by Hebert. He walked and is only at bat in this game and scored the only Hiller's run. He swiped a bag, I think. He did, fouled away. He's having a good at bat. It's not a Tommy Ambrosino at bat, but he's getting there. Full count pitch here. A and number. this is a fair ball on the infield grass. Bobbled by the pitcher, but he's able to pick it up and throw over one away. That could have been very, very costly for Kuhn. With the spin on that ball and the speed of Connor Hebert. Just dodged a bullet, that's just there. That'll bring up Ben McKenzie. McKenzie is 0-4-2 today. He's due, he's really due. Kuhn doesn't know it yet. That one is outside. Kenzie really likes to almost block the plate a little bit when he's at bat. Takes a strike there. He's gonna swing at his pitch, not a Coons pitch. The 1-1, one, one. fouled away. Be nice for him to get a hit. Guaranteed to steal. That's fouled away into the backstop. One and two. The count remains. Owen's got to be getting tired. Yeah, a lot of good battles by these Hillers hitters. No warm up action as of yet for Duxbury. Swing. 
swinging strike, two away. That's a rarity. Second strikeout of the game for Ben McKenzie. I'll bring up Tommy Ambersoni. And the pitch, and that hit him. Didn't even budge. That bring, ball rode right in on Tommy M. Oh, there, there was no way he was getting out of the way of that one. I'll bring up Steve Simos. I think the only person that was called back into uh, the batter's box this year was this young man for not making at least a, an attempt to get out of the, the way. And he tends to hang over the home plate a little bit. Hanging above any portion of that plate and it hits you, the umpire could call it back. Checking at first, runner back safe. That wasn't his best move. I'm referring to Kuhn. I think that was more of a warning move. Dummy move, warning move. I know you're there move. Embracino getting a little bit. Breaking pitch outside. Didn't quite get a really good secondary. Simos is 0 for 2 on the day as well. Ooh, that hit him. Two on. Number 14 on the year. Surprise, 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 as they say down south. Well, I think he uh, saw his teammate get hit, and he says, you know what? I got to get hit too. I got to take one for the team. Two on, two outs, and now we'll get a conference on the mound. As Zach Sasitsky set to step in, he's one for two on the day. Last time he faced Kuhn, he really laced one to right field. And as we have the break for the Duxbury coach to talk to his pitcher, Coach Simon's gonna talk to his base runners. Gonna try a double steal here. Might be a little risky. Can't say it would shock me. Well, they've seen Murphy's arm, or lack thereof. Second baseman has got to play Zach, the pole. So Tommy and Brasino can get a big lead over there. That one is outside, 1-0. Tommy Ambersoni at second, Steve Simos at first. Both were hit by a pitch. Two outs in the inning. As Kuhn steps off the mound. See what Coach Simos has got cooked up here. The 1 0. Outside, 2 0. Coach Simos talked to the Duxbury coach before the game told him he could use the bullpen. It was just built last week. The 2-0, there's a strike. Two and one on Zach Sasitsky. Tyler Doherty and Robbie Pagliuca. Waiting on the foul balls, that's their job today. Air strike two. The two two. Both runners with a pretty significant lead. Oh, that one up high. Watch looks like, out, Zelmo. Looks like both runners are set to take off there. Simos was halfway up the base path. Full count now on Sasitsky. Now the runners will be off. Get as big a lead as he could possibly get. Oh. And there it is, strike three. And Kuhn able to get Sasitsky to get out of the inning with no harm done. 
We will head to the top of the six. It's a one nothing lead for the Hailers. Duxbury down to their final six outs on H camp. Top of the sixth inning, three, four, and five due up for Duxbury. Pat Malampi, the first baseman, Frankie Tower, the right fielder, and Aiden Lesko, the DH. Brendan Kelly has pitched a great game so far today, but still only a one nothing lead for the Hillers. And what has been a great pitcher's duel between Brendan Kelly and Charlie Kuhn. Strike one to McClampy. Brendan's been in this situation before, as you recall last year in the semifinals against Greater New Bedford Vocational High. He was the starting pitcher. One and one. Pat Malampi, one for two today, singled in the first, grounded out in the third. And he rips this one up the right side. That's past the dive of Jack Whaley, and that is a single to start off the inning for Malampi. That'll bring up Frankie Tower, the right fielder. One on, no outs for Duxbury. We'll see what the long-legged McClampy can do on the bases. Line up and the pitch. Strike one. Nice yakker, Brendan. Nice pitch. He was looking for the heater and he got the big bender. This is hit in the air over to left field. Could be trouble, but it won't be for Connor Hebert, who covers a good amount of ground to get to that one. One away. Got a very fast outfield out there. That'll bring up Aiden Lusco. It was nice to see Lily Morningstar come down today, point guard for the Hillers, center fielder for the girls softball team. There's a strike. Lusco's one for two today. Struck out in the second, singled in the fourth. One on, one out. Gets a piece of that one, foul, 0 and 2. Was that an excuse me swing? Yeah, just push that one away. Kelly from the stretch. Runner taking off from first, that is strike three. It is going to be a stolen base for Malampi. And no, he's the, after the strikeout, Lusco runs down the line, so he's gonna be over at first base. First no, base they was do occupied. Call him out. They do call him out, yep, because uh, first base was occupied. So that's two outs, runner on second. Stolen base for Malampi, and that'll bring up Jack Murphy. Kelly from the stretch. Ball one. He's got a chance to tie the game. Brendan's got a bear down. Two outs, one on. There's a strike. Ho oh, oh. ho. Last two games he is confident in that breaking pitch. The one one. Check swing couldn't hold. One and two. Back to back breaking pitches by Brendan. Will he go for the trifecta, Tom? One put it past him. Seven strikeouts in the game for Brandon Kelly. That one low. Two and two. If you put money on that pitch, you would have won. That was the trifecta. From the 
down the stretch. The 2-2. Two -two. There it is, got him looking. Strikeout number eight for Brendan Kelly. And we will head to the bottom of the sixth. The Hillers leading Duxbury, one nothing on H cam. Bottom of the sixth inning, five, six, and seven do up for the Hillers. Anthony Farina, Jack Whaley, and Ryan Kester. All kinds of defensive changes to tell you about. A new pitcher for Duxbury, Pat Malampi, comes in to take over pitching duties for Charlie Kuhn, who pitched a great game. Kuhn went five innings, giving up four hits, one run, which was earned, three walks, and two hit batters. Over in left field is Charlie Kuhn, the starting pitcher, taking over left field duties. Jack Peters moves from third base to first base, and Connor Bossy is the new third baseman for the Duxbury Green Dragons, who are hoping to avoid falling behind any more runs here in this bottom of the sixth. Hillers, of course, would love to add some insurance to this one nothing lead. The only run of the game came in the third inning. Connor Hebert drew a walks, stole a base, and advanced on a wild pitch, and then Tommy Ambersoni knocked him in with the RBI single. Hopefully the Hillers can send the Green Dragons home with their tail between their legs. I don't know it was bad, Tom, but had to do it. Anthony Farina steps in, 0 for 2 today. Kuhn pitched a really good game. Certainly did. There's strike one. To hold this line, uh, to hold this Hillers lineup to only one run, that is impressive. Strike two. Anthony's got to protect the plate now, down 0-2. Malampi throws over the top. He's got a 12-6 curveball. Like Strike that. three, he's gonna run it down. The throw over to first, no problem. One away. I'll bring up Jack Whaley, the second baseman. No, I don't want, know why they didn't start Malampi. Good, really lively fastball. Well, that's what they did with Dighton and Merhoboth. Or maybe he doesn't have the uh, starter's mentality. Well, Charlie Kuhn did pitch a great game, so. Can't really fault the starting pitcher on this one if you're Duxbury. As this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, two away. I'll bring up Brian Kester. If Ryan's retired, does Brendan Kelly have enough bullets in his gun to retire these green dragons? There's a strike. Well, I'd imagine they're gonna send him out there. Gonna go with your number one. You're gonna ride him. Up high. One and one. Swinging strike. One and two. Coach Simos told me earlier in the year he's gonna ride Brendan Kelly. He's his horse. Up the left side, that'll get through for a two-out base hit by Ryan Kester. Have a pinch hitter for Brandon Kelly. Looks like it's going to be Bob Pagliuca. So Bob Pagliuca will come in, which could mean Brendan Kelly is done. I think you can go in on the re-entry, don't you? I believe he can. I predicted before the game that Matt Lindquist was going to be the hero. He didn't get the start. Two outs, one on. 
Bottom of the sixth, Hiller is the leading Duxbury, 1-0. They're tuned in to Hopkinton Hiller's playoff baseball on H-Cam. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Alex Walton on camera. A great turnout here at field two. Big crowd on hand to take into this playoff matchup. And they're certainly get the, getting their uh, money's worth here today. Yes. We get to keep the gate receipts, don't we? I believe so. Yeah. Lindquist got a very short lead over at first. Up high. Yeah, man, Lindquist in the pinch run. Check in, slides back safe. He had one crossover step there, so it was, he was in no danger of getting picked off. Coach Simons would like to get a pad run. That one's outside. Murphy took a moment to look down the line. Two and oh. That's it. That was a late time, there's a strike. Didn't give it to him. I thought it was uh, too long. Yeah, it was, he waited too long. Two and one on Pagliuca. Gotta have a clock in your head to determine when I'm gonna call time. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. If he's just stayed in the batter's box too, that would have been a three and zero count. Wind up and the pitch, strike two, and the runner taking off the throw up, not in time. There's going to be catcher's interference here, and Ed Armbrist to call. Stolen base by Matt Lindquist, two and two. And the Duxbury coach doesn't like it. That's what they're gonna argue. He didn't get out of the way, but he swung, and he wasn't in there intentionally blocking a catcher. It's coach Brandon Jocelyn, the Duxbury head coach, will come out for a discussion with the umpires. It's exactly what they're talking about. But his momentum was heading towards first base with that swing. Stop you crying. <laughs> two and two count. Runner on second, two outs. Fans here are employing Robbie Pagliuco to get a hit. Pitch up high, runner taking off for third. Easy steal by Lindquist. Full count. He totally stole that off McClampy. He didn't give him a look back. McClampy set the deal. That one's low and Pagliuca draws the walk. Two clearly, out, two clearly outs. McClampy is unhappy with the home plate umpire. Stared in at him. It's not the umpire's fault, he just threw ball four. Connor Hebert will step in now. Gets the sign from Coach Simos. As Malampy looks over towards his dugout. They're not gonna hold Robbie Pags. On, so he'll get a big lead. He's not that fleet of foot, so if he's going to send him. He's going to have to walk down there. That one upstairs. The high cheese on that one. Oh, I could smell it. Limburger cheese. That's what that was. Runners on the corners, two outs. That one low. Runner taking off from first. 
And an easy steal for Bob Pagliuca. No throw up by Murphy. Hope the camera woman caught that one. He was so quick down to second base. What blazing speed on Robbie Pagliuca. 2-0 pitch. There's a strike. Well, Clampy's going to have to pitch his way out of this jam. Rabby Pags with a swipe. The 2-1. Blazes that one by him, two and two. Well, Clampy really wants to put Connor back on the bench. There is strike three, got him looking. And Pat Malampi able to get out of a jam. To close out the bottom of the six, it's one nothing Hillers as we head to the top of the seventh on H camp. Top of the seventh inning as Tuxbury sends seven, eight, and nine hitters up to the plate. Tanner Smith is at bat. Brendan Kelly out there trying to complete this game as this is hit in the air. This will go above the backstop foul, 0 and 1. This is the last time on this field for Connor Hebert and Andrew Scirocco, Matt Lindquist, Dylan O'Leary. 0-2. Oh Nasty. Zach Sasitsky, Tommy Leone, Anthony Farina. Fouled away. Timmy Burdick. I think Brenda can feel it here. He's got to have a lot of adrenaline working right now. Duxbury down to their final three outs. One nothing Hiller's lead in the top of the seventh. Strike three. <laughs> Hoorah. Down to their final two outs. Who's up? Is that Stretch McGee or who's up now? They put a pinch hitter in? John Roberts, the oh, center John fielder, Roberts. stepping in. There's strike one. Crowd's getting a little quiet. There may be a little nerves going on in the bellies. Nine strikeouts in the game for Kelly. Brendan wanted that pitch. It's just a little bit outside. He's given up four hits today. No runs so far. Two and one count. Another breaking pitch. Stevie tried to frame that one. Pull it in, but. One walk and one hit batter as this is up the middle and it's off the glove of Tim Burdick. And that is going to be a one out hit by Roberts. And there was so much power in that ball. I don't know if that's an error. I'm giving that one a hit for now, Larry. Base hit. Now bring up Sam Regan, the left fielder. So the tying run on base for Duxbury. Brendan's going to work to the number nine hitter. I know Duxbury wants to turn the lineup over. But no free bags. There's strike one. Well, you wonder how aggressive Duxbury will be on the base paths. So I don't think they want to test Simos too much. Or we'll run into an out. Kelly from the stretch. That one's inside, runner takes off for second, and he is safe easily as Simos bobbled that pitch in the dirt. Wasn't clean enough for him to handle or throw. A wild pitch there allows Roberts to advance into scoring position with one out. The one, one. One and two. That was quite a feeble attempt. Kelly from the stretch. Outside. Two and two. Figured he'd come back with that breaking ball because he, he saw the hitter didn't uh, do much with the previous pitch. And 
and that is foul. Just stayed alive. Do you feel the tension? Can you feel the tension? Certainly can. I feel the tension. Everybody feels the tension. One on, one out, runner on second. And this is lined into right field. That'll get down for a hit. And Roberts is gonna move up to third. Runners on the corners with one out. Coach Simos might make a trip out and talk to Brendan and the infielders as to what to do if the runner takes off. Well, Coach Simos for the moment won't as Luke Eggers steps in. Stevie flashing the signs as to what to do. I don't believe there's been any warm-up action for the Hillers as of yet. Oh, I think I saw some. I think they're gonna let uh, 42 run. That one outside, briefly got away from Simos. The runners stay put. Well, Duxbury got some production out of their nine hitter. Eggers is 0 for 3 today. Upstairs. Two. And oh. Duxbury bench is trying to ride Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly, Brendan Kelly, excuse me. Kelly from the stretch. Swinging strike, blazes it by him. Charlie Kuhn do up next. The two one. Runner taking off from first to throw up by Simos, right on the money and got him, but the run gonna try to score and it's a tie game. They send John Roberts from third. The distraction was set with Sam Regan heading to second. John Roberts comes from third and we are tied at one. The double steal was on. And Duxbury has life. That's why you play for home field advantage. The 2-2. Two -two. And this is hit high in the air. Should be a routine catch, and it will. But not before Duxbury plates a run, and we play on. We are heading to the bottom of the seventh. We are tied at one at Hopkinton High School on H camp. Playing on into the bottom of the seventh. We're tied up at one apiece. Duxbury able to play to run in the top of the inning. Top of the order for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie, Tommy Ambersoni, and Steve Simos to face Pat Malampi out there for his second inning of work. He's been pitching out of the stretch the whole game. We'll see if he goes out of the full windup. Ben McKenzie 0 for 3 today. Malampi was not happy with Art Kikorian, the home plate umpire earlier. Thought he should have had some catcher's interference on a Robbie Pagliuca swing. And he carried that anger right through the inning. Is he an easily rattled pitcher? We'll find out. The Hillers have had five walk-offs here on their home field this season. And this one is to advance to the semifinals round of the South Division II bracket. Well, I gotta tell you, Tom, it's 62 and a half mile ride to Duxbury. Just saying. Ben McKenzie steps in. Outside, but a called strike. Oh and one. Ben's a good fastball hitter. He can turn this pitch around. Lampy deals. Strike two. Oh, I don't know about that one. That little tie to me. I think so. I thought the first one was more questionable. The 0-2. Foul tip. 
And that is out number one. Tommy Ambersoni will come up to the plate. He drove in the only Hillers run today. That was back in the third inning, an RBI single to score Connor Hebert. And he's having a pretty good day at the plate, one for one with a pair of walks. Bunt, strike one. Did he do that on his own, or was that a call from Coach Simos to show Bunt? I would imagine that is coming from Coach Simos. Air strike two, nice pitch. You called that before the catcher even caught it. That was right down the pipe. The 0-2, fouled away into the backstop. Good swing there by Ambersoni. He's been a pest today to the pitchers. He and Kuhn had a battle earlier in the ball game. Steve Simos due up next. Gets a piece of this one to stay alive. Count remains 0-2. Hoppington's official good luck charm has arrived, Scotty Mackin. He may lead a cheer here. The 0-2. Outside, one and two. Thought about it, good take. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike three, two away. Tommy knew it too, he was heading back to the dugout. I'll bring up Steve Simos, second strikeout of the inning for Malampi. He actually has four strikeouts since he came in, in relief, last inning. Charlie Kuhn taking out of the equation for the win or the loss. Starting pitcher for Duxbury, who went five solid innings. Strike one to Simos. Stevie shows absolutely no emotion up there at the plate. He is so focused. The 0-1. Strike two. I don't think Coach Simos liked that call. I don't think the fans liked it either. Tell they you all what. became umpires. <laughs> Strike three. Pat Malampi has struck out the side, and we will continue on to the top of the eighth. It's a 1-1 game on H Cam. Continuing on to the top of the eighth inning. Due up is 2-3 and 4 for Duxbury. Tom Leone is out there as the new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers. He takes over for Brendan Kelly, who just pitched a terrific game. Kelly went seven innings, striking out nine, giving up four hits, one walk and a hit batter. And of course, the lone run in the top of the seventh for Duxbury. Tommy will be heading to Medford to be a jumbo next year, Tufts University. As stepping in, for Duxbury is Charlie Kuhn. And here we go, top of the eighth. Wind up and the pitch, up high. What a great name to have in Boston area, Charlie. It certainly is. The 1-0 pitch, that one's upstairs. Well, certainly a tough situation for Tom Leone, who's typically a starter to come in here in the eighth inning, but this team's relying on him. As that pitch is up high. This is the second year in a row he's had a relief, Brendan Kelly, in a playoff game. Tom Leone, a 360 ERA, three wins, no losses, eight appearances, as it'll be a four pitch walk. Leone has thrown 23 and a third, 
Giving up 15 runs, 12 of which were earned. So Charlie Kuhn on first, no outs. Pat Malampi, the first baseman of the plate. He's hit the ball hard today. Will Duxbury try and put the run game on? Tommy does not have a great pickoff move over there at first base. Maybe he'll have to hold the ball a little longer or stick up, st step up the back of the rubber. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. How about eat more of those, Tommy? Lampy started the day at first base, but has relieved from the mound the last two innings for Duxbury. That one in the dirt, that's gonna get by Simos, an easy advance for Kuhn on the wild pitch. And now Coach Simos calls time. I think he either is going to talk with Tom Leone, or he's going to make a change. He's changing center fielders, it appears. The lawyer for McKenzie. So McKenzie's coming out of the game. That's interesting. It's good strategy by Coach Simos. Tommy's going to have to work himself out of this pickle. Luke DeLoya takes over in right field. And Amber Sony will move over to center. Infielder's got to knock a ball down. Lay out if they have to. Runner on second for Duxbury, no out, so one and one count on Malampi. Tommy's gonna block out all the noise that's coming from the Duxbury side and concentrate on Stevie Simos in the glove. Seventh seeded Duxbury trying to take the lead for what would be their first time today. Now Simos is gonna come out to talk to Leone. No matter what they do, they should not have a pick play over there at second base. Only bad things can happen. The 1-1, one, one. upstairs. Usually it takes Tom Leone a while to get going when he starts games. He had some time in the pen though. Yeah, then once he gets going, he really gets going. As this is hit in the air, foul, is it catchable? Yes. Nope. One away. Nobody was covering third there for a while. Tommy had to run over and field his position. We'll bring up Frankie Tower, the right fielder. One on, one out. Frankie Tower, 0 for 3 today. Time called. All right, Tommy. Deep breath now. Just gonna work the hitter. Next inning, the Hillers will have four, five, and six due up. Line up and the pitch, inside. Aiden Lusco on deck for Duxbury. Infielders have to get their uniform dirty. Anything hitting the holes. 
He deals in the dirt. Good block by Simos. 2-0. and oh. Coach Simos looking on. The 2-0 pitch in there for a strike. All right, he's shown them the bender. Tommy primarily or almost exclusively a fastball pitcher. The 2-1. Upstairs. Good snag by Simos. Runner on second, one out, a three and one count on the cleanup man, Frankie Tower. Not the worst thing in the world, although you don't want it to happen. If he loses him, you'll have a force in play. Inside draws the walk. Coach Simos is gonna take a walk. Two on, one out. Coach Simos gonna have a discussion with Tom Leone. Try to settle him down a bit. Aiden Lusco stepping in for Duxbury. Oh, tough situation to be in if you're sure Tom is. Leone. We're in a tough spot here. Somebody brought down some popcorn and they didn't share, us, share any with us. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now, if I gotta ask for popcorn. Is infield giving them A few attaboys some, uh, out there? Yeah. Some words of confidence, words of wisdom. As Aiden Lusco will step in. He is one for three today. Two on, one out. Tom Leone from the stretch. Upstairs. Has not been able to establish that release point yet. Yeah, he's having trouble finding the strike zone the last couple of hitters. He knows how to do it. Takes a long stare in. Up high, two and oh. Seems as though Tommy wants to throw the ball through a brick wall. Maybe he's extra amped up. Two oh pitch, up high. You wonder if we'll go to a breaking pitch, try to get down in the strike zone. There's ball four. Bases juiced. One out, bases loaded. Jack Murphy, the catcher, stepping in. Infield gonna be playing in to cut down a run at the plate. Duxbury coach talking to Murphy. Will Duxbury pull a Steve Simos? Drop down a bunt. Would not surprise me. I don't know, I think you let Leone keep throwing. He can't seem to find a strike zone right now. Well, they may be take, take, take. Checking that second runner back. They nearly picked him off. They were trying to catch that runner off guard and get a quick out. Decent inside move by Tommy. Dangerous move, but it did no harm. Ball goes in the outfield and scores a run. Go ahead, run. He's facing the lower part of the order. He's just got to bear down and throw strikes. There's a strike. Big applause from the crowd. A large exhalation from the crowd. Pins and needles from the crowd. The 0 1. Inside. 1 and 1. 
Nice job by Simos once again. Scoreboard's got it wrong. Now they got it right. Bases loaded, one out for Duxbury. Here in the top of the eighth, it's a 1-1 game. Gets a piece of this one over to left field. It is caught. Runner from third is going to tag. The throw in is cut off. It's 2-1 to one Duxbury. Jack Murphy with a sacrifice RBI fly out. Charlie Kuhn comes around to score. The other runners stay put. Frankie Tower over at second. Aiden Lusco at first. Tanner Smith, the shortstop, will step into the batter's box. We'll call this Duxbury team pesky. Hanging around too long today. Offense to speak of from the Hillers. Well, fortunately they get another at bat. Swinging strike. He knew he swung at a bad pitch there. Line up and the pitch, upstairs, one and one. Well now what you wanna do here if you are the Hillers, make sure there's no further damage. You got a good part of your batting order coming up in the bottom of the inning. Swinging strike, nice pitch from Leone, one and two. Apparently he likes his pitches eye high. Can't lay off that high pitch. Duxbury scored in the top of the seventh. Now they have one in the top of the eighth. Make it a 2-1 lead. That one in the dirt, Simos covers it up. Push the hitter out of the way. Two and two. Leone from the stretch. Well, I think both of these teams have shown that they aren't going down without a fight. That one inside. Max Smith off the plate. Winner of this game advances on to take on the winner of Nosset and Oliver Ames. The full count pitch. Checking at second, runner back safe. Nicely done. See what I mean? By Burdick. <laughs> Burdick saved Timmy that one. Timmy just got that one. <laughs> coach Simons will coach to the very last pitch. Certainly will. Full count pitch. Up high, draws the walk, bases loaded. Two outs, bases full of green dragons. Coach Samos, what does he have, two mound visits or three? I believe on the third one he has to take the pitcher out. Well, he's going for a new pitcher now. All right, we're gonna have a new pitcher. Andrew Scirocco. Tom Leone will come out, Andrew Scirocco will come in. Two outs in the inning, bases loaded for Duxbury, and they have a 2-1 lead. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Playoff Baseball on HCAN. Continuing on with the top of the eighth inning, a new pitcher for the Hillers, or third pitcher of the game, Anthony Sirocco, out there to take over for Tom Leone. Leone ended up walking four in this inning. It led to a Duxbury run. And they're gonna try to steal home here. They'll get the out. Nicely done by Simos. Some emphasis added on that tag. He pushed him down into the ground. And that will wrap up the top of the eighth. Duxbury trying to catch the Hillers off guard, but they were ready for it. The Hillers need to score at least a run to stay alive. It's 2-1 Duxbury on HCAM. 
Bottom of the eighth inning, the Hillers down to their final three outs, four, five, and six to up. Zach Sasitsky, Anthony Farina, and Jack Whaley. On the mound is Pat Malampi, his third inning of work for Duxbury. Zach has been in these pressure situations before, going all the way back to Little League. And the pitcher arguing he swung, and the home plate umpire takes the call down on the line of the first base umpire, and they say it's ball one. There's no way he could see that check swing. I don't think he went around. No, he didn't go around, but there's no way. The catcher can ask, but. There's a strike. I'll put my money on Zach Sasiski any day. Swinging strike. One and two. Check swing, but he went one away. That'll bring up Anthony Farina. Hillers down to their final two outs. Crowds get definitely more quiet. So he has. Duxbury's definitely playing a no doubles defense. They're very deep all the way around. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one. There's a the ball. Good take by Anthony Farina. Anthony Farina 0 for 3 today. There's a strike, one and two. The Hillers had 14 wins and three losses that were considered for the playoff standings. They did play three extra games and went 16 and five overall. So that is a foul ball. Count remains one and two. Malampi shouldn't be uh, questioning the home plate umpire or the home plate umpire has a lot of power. Yeah, Malampi arguing that ball is fair. And this is up the third base side, gloved by the third baseman, throw over, and that is in time, two away. Hillers down to their final out. Jack Whaley will step in. Can he continue this season for the Hillers? There's a ball, 1-0. Could be his last at bat in Massachusetts. We hope he strikes. A called strike, I don't know about that one, one and one. Fouled away, one and two. Wind up and the pitch. Gets a piece of it up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. The throw over in time. And they go down one, two, three in the bottom of the eighth. Duxbury has done it. The Duxbury Green Dragons advance on and get the upset win over the Hopkinton Hillers. Duxbury now 13 and eight. Overall, the Hillers will finish their season with 14 wins. And four losses, Duxbury scores two runs on five hits. The Hillers one run on five hits. The winning pitcher is Pat Malampi. The loss goes to Tom Leone. A tough end for this Hopkinton Hillers baseball team, but they were certainly a whole lot of fun to watch and featured a whole lot of talent. And we'll certainly look forward to Ashland Legion baseball and hope that we see some of those Hillers players in Ashland Legion uniforms this season.
the Duxbury Green Dragons take down the Hopkinton Hillers by a final score of two to one in eight innings of play. For Alex Walton on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers baseball all season long. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon, everybody.